Today on Schmindian, we're making flaky and delicious muttis. Muttis are a savory Indian tea time snack that will save your life through many awkward conversations. Let's make them. Welcome to Schmindian. My name is Paul Singh and this is Indian Food Demystified, aka Indian Food for Schmucks. So if you're new to the channel, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the dish and then we're going to make it and then my dad is going to try it and tell me what he thinks. Muttis are the mensch of Indian food. We're Indians. We like to have our afternoon tea and we like to have our afternoon tea with snacks and muttis are a great snack for afternoon tea. It's very similar to a scone. It's super flaky but also savory and you can eat it with savory condiments or sweet condiments. That's a whole other thing. But muttis are one of those things that most people keep in the pantry just in case. Because muttis will keep for many weeks. I'm not exactly sure how many weeks because I don't think anyone in India has actually tested this. But you can just put these in a Tupperware, put them in the, in the pantry and they will last a long ass time. And you need that because Indians pop in. Indian relatives definitely pop in. They'll pop in at 10.30 in the morning. They'll pop in at three o'clock in the afternoon. They'll pop in at 10 o'clock at night. They don't care. They will pop in. They won't text you before, they won't call you before, they'll just show up. So we gotta feed these people. That's just how it's done. Muttis are a defensive food for the Indian pop-in, which always happens. If you keep a stash of muttis in the pantry at all times, you'll never have to worry about the fear of the pop-in anymore. Because you're covered, you got your muttis. More awkward conversations have been had while eating muttis than I think any other food ever. So-and-so doesn't want to marry so-and-so. Your son doesn't want to become a doctor. He wants to become a stilt walker. That's a weird one. Your cousin wants to rope you into some kind of multi-level marketing scheme. Also a weird one. And you just eat muttis, man, and try to figure out how you can get out of this conversation, or at least endure it until it naturally comes to an end, which <sighs> sometimes it take a while. And I mean, you can eat these with jam. You can eat them with the char. You can eat them with chutney. Uh, sometimes I'll break them up and put them into raita. That's a cool one. Or sometimes I'll break them up and put them into chole. That's also a nice one. Muttis give and give and give because all they want us to do is be happy. They're there for us when we need them in the pantry. They don't complain. They're easy to make. Low maintenance, high emotional support, cooking. That's what muttis are. We need to show our appreciation for this wonderful dish. But all it does is give. There's a lot of different ways to make muttis, but today I'm going to show you how to make my family's authentic, Punjabi methi muttis. I love the alliteration of methi muttis, by the way. Really nice. Flaky, delicious, provides a social safety net for weird conversations. Let's make some muttis. And here's our wonderful ingredients. Two cups AP flour, half a teaspoon of pepper, quarter teaspoon of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of edgewain, tablespoon of dry methi or fenugreek, half a cup of vegetable oil, and half a cup of ghee or melted butter if you don't have ghee. But try to get some ghee. So first step is simple, just put everything into a big old bowl. In goes the flour, pepper, baking powder, salt, edgewain. So the methi is awesome, but a quick warning, it can bother people who have nut allergies. So Google methi, Google fenugreek, make sure it's okay for you and your family before you put it in. Anyway, it's okay for me and my family, so I'm putting it in. We're gonna mix these up with a whisk. Now the vegetable oil and the ghee. I'm a big proponent of mixing fats. I think fat things should be together. We've got three quarters of a cup of water. Water mixes with the fat, mixes with the baking powder and creates gluten, which makes it nice and crispy and flaky. Now we gotta go with our hands. It's like people in Italy make scones, savory scones. It's the same deal here. It's getting really nice and flaky. We're gonna gradually add water and knead for about five minutes or until everything is nice and put together. And then we're going to transfer it to a flat surface. Well, it's just a roughly even blob, like that. Now we're going to cut this blob down the middle. Take one side, put it over here, and we are going to turn this half into like a sandworm. And you just kind of squeeze and roll, because it's, it's very flaky, so it's not really elasticy. So you kind of have to squeeze and roll, you know what I mean? Keep it together, but spread it out. There's one snake, and the other guy. We've got two mutti snakes, 
and they equal deliciousness. So we're gonna cut these into 35 to 40 gram portions each. That should give us about 24 muttis at the end. So now that we've got our portions, we're gonna shape them into tiny little hockey pucks and then put them in this plate. Basically, you're just trying to get it into the shape of a circle. You want them in roughly three inches of diameter. The dough will talk to you with how it reacts to your touch and you must adjust the way you touch it. Most important thing is, are you having fun? I am. Not bad, eh? Some people like to poke these with a fork and I think that's to prevent them from inflating like balloons, but the ones I've done don't inflate like balloons, so I think that's a bit of a myth. But you can still do it if you want to, just poke them with a fork. Now we gotta deep fry these little guys. We're gonna fry them in canola oil. When the oil reaches 325, we're gonna start frying our mutties. You want them about this brown, about that brown. I found it usually takes about three minutes at 325, but you have to eyeball it a little bit. I'm gonna put some paper towels here to catch the grease, and we're gonna go here, 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 here. That's the move. Pro tip, I saved a tiny little ball of dough right here, and that'll show you how hot the oil is. Or you can use the thermometer, which is a lot less cool than this method, but uh, you know, it's up to you. It's floating. The oil's ready. Okay, first one. The oil was hotter than I anticipated, so the mutti turned out browner than I anticipated, but uh, it's still delicious. But for consistent results, three minutes at 325. Now let's plate these up. Like I said, you can eat them savory or sweet. I've got a savory option here where I'm using spicy achara as a condiment. And I've got a sweet option here where I'm using jam as a condiment. Both were good, but I like the sweet mutti better. So I'm just gonna finish this off. But don't just take my word for it. Let's see what my dad thinks. Dad? Yes, Paul. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> what are we eating today? Looks like mutti today with tea. I've heard that Indian people like to drop by unannounced. Yeah, and that then happens. I... That's quite quite common in Indian culture that uh, people happen to be in the town from their relatives or friends and they just knock the door and say anybody home and walk in. And this kind of stuff, sitting home is always helpful. I have one with the char and one with jam. Would you like to try them? Okay, we'll try with the char. This is a char, I think. Yeah. It looks good, Paul. Like uh, outside looks good, good color. Not fried too much so it become hard. Okay, I tried to match my skin color. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good color. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, okay. Mm. They're both good. Mm -hmm. They're crispy. They're moist inside. Like they're not hard. Which people like when when you have a bite out of it and it melts in your mouth. Mm. That's what it tastes good. That tastes good. So that's why I say it's, a, it's moist, it's crispy outside, and it's not overcooked, which is perfect. Oh, thanks, Dad. Sometimes you have mati which is are too thin, yeah. and then you fry, yeah. they become hard. Oh, okay. But this is the thickness and the frying, yeah. and as I said, it's moist, moist inside, which is good. Okay. Would, would you make any changes? Would you add anything or make any adjustment? No. No? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Do you want to finish them or do you want to leave them for later? No, I'll finish them. I like so much. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Okay. Are well, you taking the <laughs> okay. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more, then click over there. Or over there. See you next time.